Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and all in between. Vampire the Masquerade is a mature role-playing game. Please note that anything said or done during this game does not reflect the views of the players, the Game Weaver, or the Grange Live. Viewer discretion is advised. Birmingham City, United Kingdom, a city of over a million people, the next greatest city for mortals to the capital, though there are some may say that Birmingham was always greater. Tonight, those claims are true. After the kindred of London fell to the Second Inquisition, Birmingham has become a safe haven for those few who survived and fled northwards to escape the fires. We will be following the lives of five Camarilla kindred. This is their story. We begin with a warehouse, just on the outskirts of Birmingham, but still close enough to be considered the Prince's Domain. Standing outside the main door are two men carrying boxes from a removal van and into the ground floor. George, could you please introduce yourself? Hello, my name's George. I am uh, about six foot ten. Very, very well built. I've been, uh, I, I, I work out almost continuously. Uh, very beaten up looking. Got a nose that's a little bit out of joint. Uh, Got a big scar across my face. Uh, you can tell that I'm rough and ready for a fight at any point in time. And lifting this box is, these boxes is absolutely nothing to me. Tobias, please introduce yourself. My name is Tobias Lidout. I stand six foot tall, rangy rather than the large hulk stood next to me. Dark hair over a pale olive coloured skin. Poking out from the collar of my shirt is a large, deep burn mark that seems to cover most of the left side of my neck. From rolled up sleeves, you can see a deep scar on the right forearm poking out. The boxes in my hands don't seem to weigh as much as you'd think, but I don't have them with quite the same ease as George. As George and Tobias return to the van to collect the last few boxes, a black BMW pulls up alongside the removal van. Out of this car step three further figures, two women and a gentleman. Duke, could you please introduce yourself? Bonjour, my friends. I am the Duke. Obviously not my real name, but a name that I have come to favour. I am dressed in a perfectly impeccable suit, a stone grey with a lighter grey waistcoat and an open button white shirt. My suit may be lovely, but the rest of me, not so much. Standing at about 5'9", with a more thin, athletic, lanky build, my hair looks slightly greasy and is combed over to one side. And then you see the skin. And the last that is where the horror begins. The skin is malformed, almost decrepit and gangrenous in some places. The nose pretty much almost looking rotted away. The eyes sullen. The skin just like leather and a decaying corpse mixed together. Magnifique, no? Zelda, could you please introduce yourself? Hello, I am Zelda von der Hyde. I stand at about six foot two. I have pale white skin. Um, my hair is lovely and straight and purple to the sheen and I am currently wearing just a standard pair of black trousers and white shirt. 
And I am Anastasia in Devon. I am five foot five. I have a lovely black sleek dress on, a beautiful green emerald necklace around my perfect throat. I have long dark hair, bright red lips, and gorgeous olive skin. These are our five kindred. This is just the beginning. George, darling. Yep. Did you get you all want... of the things out of the van? I've got... I've got most of them out of there. Is there anything in particular that you wanted? Mm, no, not really. Though you could get my suitcase out of the car if you don't mind. I mean, I could. I'm going to pop this down first. Just uh, drop the the case that I'm carrying. Oh, I hope there was down. nothing breakable in there. No, uh, there shouldn't be. There shouldn't be. They wouldn't have given it to me if it was. <laughs> I uh, trundle on over to the car and open the boot up. Take the suitcase out. Start trudging it back towards uh, the unit. Uh, this is Homan. Well, this was the best that we could get for the time being. Uh, I suppose it will have to do. I will uh, then take my small bag with the laptop in it out and walk up to the unit myself. It has a certain charm to it. The unit is incredibly basic. It has nothing inside of it. It is quite run down. It's going to need a lot of fixing up. But there are two floors to it. It does have a ground floor and a set of iron cast stairs that lead up to a second floor. There is one main doorway in and then a set of very large shutters right next to the door, which obviously you would be able to open up and, for example, drive a vehicle through. Hmm. I hope the inside is better direct decorated than the outside, Shelley. Oh, the inside is currently a blank canvas. There is... There's nothing in there yet. The code word there, Sherry, was yet. Yet. Mm, well, give it time. We have stuff to put in, and I'm sure we can find suitable features to add. Anyone with your artistic nature and your brilliance and beauty would surely fill it with wonders beyond the imagination. Oh, I mean, I could. I really could. But I just feel like somebody else should do the work for a change. I don't know, maybe, uh, how about we let George and Tobias do all the decorating for a change? You are... Shakata. Please tell me you are joking. Why would I be joking? Just look at what they're wearing. What's wrong with what they're wearing? <sighs> Sacre bleu. <laughs> Yeah. What is wrong with what we're wearing? The correct question is, what is right with what you're wearing? Well, it's perfectly suitable for, for what I do. Which Perhaps is... you might wear something more like this if you actually did any hard labour. <laughs> yep. You, my friends, are the hammer and I am the silent knife in the dark. This is what we do. Yeah. Well, you, you stay your silent knife in the dark and you stop criticising us for being out here in, in, in the uh, open. How about that? I am so grateful for your wise advice, George. Did you get all the boxes? Yep. I've got all the boxes. They're all set out. Have a rummage through if you want. Oh, no, no. It's quite all right. While the rest of the coterie are chatting amongst themselves, Stella is going to take the keys out and open the building and step inside. 
So as previously stated, the building on the inside is completely bare. There is nothing in there. Well, looks like we got our work cut out for us. Um, George? Um, yep? Have you found my desk yet, by any chance? Your desk? Hold on a second. Or I'll go through to the next room. Pick up something. Walk through. Um... I reappear just carrying the desk on one hand. <laughs> ah. This desk. Uh, yes, ah, excellent. Could you uh, put it upstairs in whatever you deem fit would be an office? All right, then. You do realise, Zelda, that we are going to have to make rooms in here. There are no rooms at the moment. Ah, yes. Um, anywhere upstairs will be fine, then, George. Anywhere upstairs. Got it. Near a power point. This is your oh, yeah. problem, Mademoiselle. You spend too much time thinking of the big picture rather than looking at the little picture. Like, we need the walls and the doors first. It's not necessary. I mean, we could put the desk down and then just build around the desk. She is the centre of her own little world. This makes sense. Perfect idea. I like this one. Right, so... Desk down, everything else around the desk. Got it. I start walking up the stairs. Well, let's let's make sure everything else is here, shall we? Uh, printers. Do we have the, the uh, mechanical part? Mechanic parts. George's gym equipment. Well, I highly doubt George left without his gym equipment. It goes everywhere with him. He could just use a table again. I feel like that would eventually just break the table. Ah, oh, we shall. Now, I have the question. Will I have some private space in a small dark room for my requirements, please? I'm <sighs> sure that can be arranged. Ah, magnifique. It's all part of the contract. I need places to store my next meal. Yes, I think maybe somewhere at the back of the building might be best for that sort of thing. Of course, I am used to having small dank cellars. Having the back room is almost a promotion for me. Mm, yeah, sadly, there wasn't a cellar option for this building. Perhaps next time. Perhaps. <laughs> If you really want one, I'm pretty sure we can just let George loose with a pick hammer. You are quite right. You are quite right. What was your name again, sir? I forget your name. Toby. Ah, I'll forget it in a bit. Yeah, I'm you not shocked. You really must learn to remember everyone's names, Duke. It's rather mean if you forget. Yes, but if they cannot remember what clan they belong to, how can I remember their name, Sherry? Well, if it wasn't for me and some of mine, you'd be speaking fucking German, so if I were you, I'd be a bit nice. What is that? What, almost 50, 60 years ago now? Let us please keep with the modern times and get new material, but my petite friend. Well, my, my petite chiffler, if it wasn't for us, like I said, you wouldn't be so grandiose, would you? Ah, uh, so be it. Now, now, boys, settle down. Come trudging back down the stairs again. Did I see hear something about uh, renovating? Yeah, we want you to dig a basement. Dig a basement? If it's not so necessary, kind. George. It's not. I mean, I could do it. It'll make a lot of noise. It's it's not necessary at this point. Let's not uh, do anything that we don't have planning permission for yet. Yeah, we probably want to put it past the prince first. Indeed. Speaking of the prince... I was prince, more worried about putting it past the council. Oh, the council, council wouldn't like, be a problem. No. <laughs> yeah. The prince, on the other hand... Well. He might be an issue. He does rule with a quite strong fist. One would say iron, even. Hmm. Mm. Yeah, but I ain't in that tough. It's an expression, George. An expression. 
Yeah. Hmm. I wouldn't like to go against him. That's for certain. What is our arrangement with this prince of ours? Has he given us domain in the, his city? We are... Not as such. There are things time. that need to be spoken about. It, it is in motion, as one would say. Mm, yes. The, uh, the application, so to speak, is still processing... So, whilst we may have this property, and by all legal rights, own it, the prince can still turn around and, for lack of better words, chuck us out. We may have the physical, but we do not have the kindred law for this place. Currently, no. But I'm working on that. Thank yeah, you. that sounds like your job and the uh, job for boss lady. <laughs> yes. I, I'm, I'm sure there will be much talking with the prince. Well, now, let us uh, write an itinerary of what we need to do to this place. We know we need to set up the garage, as it were. Yep. The storage area. And your gym. Yeah. Gym I can sort out quite quickly. Excellent. There's mo as it's, because as soon as we've got the go-ahead, of course, we'll want you to be able to have customers. Yeah. More customers. More food. More money. Yeah, money's good, but food is better. Indeed. I am kind of hoping that the prince does let us stay and that perhaps he may be able to um, get me some communications with the local radio stations around here. It's been a bit of a while since I've done a performance. The world cries because it has not heard your beautiful voice, Shelley. Oh, I know. Such a tragedy, really. It truly is. We put that on the internary, a soundproof room for you to practice in. Well, if we've got the space, then I wouldn't say no to having a private soundproofed room here. But I can always go and find a more suitable location. I mean, I feel like a soundproof room is actually going to be real useful. Real I, useful. I could definitely do with a soundproof room for my permanent guests. I think the entire building is just going to have to be soundproofed. I mean, I can sort that out. Expensive. Mm, as we all know, money's not an issue. We do not all have your resources. Yes, mm. and we don't have all of your resources. This is true. Not while we're here, we don't. No. Whilst we may have a bit of money, we don't have all of it. Remember, all of the assets were tied up in London. This is true. We are going to have to sort some more suppliers. As mm -hmm. well. I am running very low on uh, on my stocks. I must say, my friends, I would be very, very interested in to get the real story of what happened in London, rather than just rumours. Well, <laughs> what more is there to say but Second Inquisition? Yeah, indeed, uh, it weren't pretty. I'll tell you that for free. As I understand it, the Nosferatu net was hacked, and all of our kindred secrets just fell into the hands of mortals. Can I just personally say that StrikeNet would never really be so simple as to just be hacked? Someone must have gave something away. Mm. Maybe this could be said, but you have to remember, technology is evolving at incredible rates. There are mortal children out there that couldn't ha can hack into military networks. And what you need to remember, my dear boss, is it was my clan that 
helped the evolution of technology all the way back in the Cold War. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But then that doesn't mean that you've got impregnable defences. Do it now. I shall grant you that, George. Technology is a wondrous thing. However, it is also easily broken. That it is. It's not that much in this world that ain't easily broken if you give it the right push. Yes. Except for our bond of friendship. Even with Filthy Kated, we are still friends and bonded for a true friendship and the common cause. No offence, Kative. Oh. Mm. So... Yeah. You really, really must stop calling him by his name. Yes. Yeah, he has got a name. He hasn't got a clan, though. I mean, I understand that you're <sighs> French, but that's not really an excuse for being rude now, is it? It's not rude. It definitely seems to be an excuse for not being a grateful little shit, doesn't it? <laughs> I would well. agree. I mean, you can't hold something like that against Haynes, the fellow kindred. Many people do, my dear boss, and I can't help but feel slightly wary of someone who doesn't choose a family. He has chosen a family. I have chosen a family, but I think you'll find a lot of the choice was taken away from me at the start. It's not exactly my fault, is it? As much as the issues of the past are hardly yours. Yeah, not exactly like any of us chose our family, really. You get bit, and that's it. You make it sound so romantic. And about romance, it's about cold, hard reality, mate. You understand, dear George, that once you are turned and you look so hideous, you must find romance and beauty and other things rather than reality. Well, I mean, that sounds like a you problem, doesn't it? We. Oui. So what sounds like a me problem is I've got to get this gym set up. Well, I'm between you and Tobias, I'm sure you can set up your gym quite efficiently. Oh, yeah. Hold on a second. I I, I seem to just disappear. <laughs> right. Uh, well, while well, things are set up, I will take a few moments and go set up the laptop and set up an itinerary so we can cross things off as it's done. I'll be right back with you all. And with that, uh, Zelda will go upstairs to the freshly planted desk and take out her laptop. I, I have to say, dear friend, she really is a stereotypical venture, is she not? Look, if she, wants, accountant. if she wants to go and do business, she can go and do business. She's probably going to have to do a lot of it over the next week before we even consider doing anything else. Especially if the prince turns around and tells us to leave. Now, on that note, why it's just the three of us, dear friends... What do we think that the prince will ask her, dear employer, to maybe gain dominion here? Well, I don't know. I don't know a lot about Birmingham, to be honest. No, neither do I. Hmm. Considering it's a very good city, very tight-lipped. I can imagine this is probably due with the fact that there are many refugees coming to the city at the moment. Quite so it's not so much tight-lipped as just bloody confused. <sighs> Timothy over here has a point. His name is Tobias, Duke Tobias. My, apo my apologies, Trevor. <sighs> it's not a problem, Daisy. Oh, for goodness sake. I wish I was as pretty as a Daisy. You flatter me. Mercy. Tobias just looks incredibly confused and shakes his head before starting rummaging around the boxes. There is a large amount of clanging coming from a room over. What on earth is that noise? Is that George? Is he in the I bloody gym already? I hope he doesn't break the ceiling. I hope he really doesn't. <sighs> that 
Best go check to make sure he's not doing anything to the building he shouldn't be doing. And I'm going to walk towards the room where George is. And I will go with her, half cautiously expecting to find George just power lifting it. As they all walk off, the Duke watches them go, smiles, and calls upon his power of his blood and slowly fades out of sight. So, as everyone enters the room, uh, I I drop a weight, uh, seem to disappear again, come back in, drop another weight down next to it, seem to disappear again, come back in, drop another weight down next to it, and on and on, until there is a whole sort of uh, gra- a gradual uh, weight bar going on. George, dear, if you keep dropping the weights on the floor like that, you're going to dent the floor. It's fine. We can, I, I can sort out a better floor. If floor's that easily dented, then other people are going to break it before I get at it. Well, I mean, I would imagine you would have put some mats down first. Mats? Mats? That's an idea. That's what I should have got out first. You, Yeah, you are right. You are right. You are right. Uh... <laughs> I, I disappear, am. come back holding a mat, <laughs> pop it down on the floor. <laughs> oh dear. Really that should is... work from the bottom up, George. Mats first, then everything else. Right. Mats first, everything else on top of the mats. Yes. I mean, it doesn't take that long to switch it all around again afterwards, but... Yeah, yeah, I see your point, I see your point. I start rolling I out the mats and uh, weights go on top of the mats I just don't no, no never mind let's get going what do we need out next ma'am what do we need next probably get the treadmill in I mean I don't use it but I mean like someone else might uh, not not quite what I meant, George, but well done on contributing. Cheers. I'm going to leave you two boys to sort this out. And I'm going to leave the room and I'm going to go up to where Zelda is whilst these two continue dealing with the weights room. Zelda is currently sat at the laptop tapping away on what appears to be a spreadsheet. Ah, can I help you? Just checking in, seeing how you're getting on. I see you've uh, got yourself a rudimentary setup going on. Um, yes. Uh, I'm just going over what inventory we used to have and what we need to replace. Um, well, the, uh, Pharmaceuticals, as we'll call them, are almost empty. We we are going to need to find some suppliers. Um, as for the things for the shop itself, we should be good there. Yes, I would imagine we're going to need a new herd. Most definitely, I mean... At least for yourselves, um, you know my feeding habits. I, I I visit a lot of parties. True, true, but I don't know about you. I don't know much about the party life around in Birmingham. Ah, yes. And we also don't know the rules that the prince has in place. Yes, that that is something I'm going to have to cover with the prince. No... George can sort himself a herd very quickly once he gets his gym patrons. The Duke prefers to be paid in kindred blood. Hmm. Tobias, then. Tobias is going to be the interesting one, I think. Really? Now, you see, I would say the Duke would be the more interesting wrong, given his... Feeding habits. Hmm. This is true. And what do you th- mean about my habits? I say as I appear in the corner, casually leaning on the wall. 
Why, dear Duke, you know what I mean. I would love to hear your opinions from your beautiful voice. Well, it's simply put it like this, that for all we know, the prince could deny you the rights to kindred blood. We? But my contract with her dear employer here states that my payment is that delicious, delicious sauce. While your contract states that, Duke, do remember that I am bound by, and yourself, the prince's laws, which means that if he declares that the drinking of kindred, other kindred's blood for your nourishment is to be frowned upon and banned in Birmingham, the contract we have will mean, well, as much as a losing lottery ticket. Hmm. If I recall, of the six traditions, there's no tradition against the drinking of kindred vitae. Killing a kindred is a tradition of destruction, we. Oui. But drinking from another is not, as long as you do not take the last drop. Whilst that may be true, dear Duke, it doesn't mean that the prince doesn't have extra traditions to go on top of the six normal traditions. We. Oui then perhaps we should just not tell him about my preference. <laughs> you want to lie to the prince? No, 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 no. Simply do not tell him. What does he need to know this? He is already going to be very busy at the moment. He does not need to know about my habits. I would strongly advise against that. Yes. He... Princes, in my experience, have... A knack for finding out every little detail and while I play dumb to some of them to try find out what I can it it goes both ways this is true there could be perhaps five others of my clan in this building right now watching what we do who knows not I exactly and I would hate to do anything to upset now a new prince. I suppose oh. if worse comes to worst, Zelda, and the prince denies dear Duke his feeding habits, then we shall have to provide him with his source another way. Yes. Although, again, I believe we would have to cross that bridge when it comes up. No, oh, of course. I'm sure... A phone call to a friend of mine could put the prince at ease and perhaps more agreeable to our way of thinking. We shall see. Mm, I wouldn't worry too much, I suppose. We always find a way. That is true. We do indeed. Now, what are those two knuckle draggers doing in that room you left? Well, it's not... It's not loud anymore. They're not banging, so I'm going to assume that they've stopped just dropping weights onto the floor. There's a loud crash, and it sounds like uh, a mirror shattering. <laughs> Fuck's sake, George! Oh, you, were, you were saying... I know, I spoke too soon. Let's... Let's, uh, let's not uh, leave them un unsupervised. That's seven years bad luck. Please, please go check on them. I'm down in a second. Very well. After and, you, uh, Shelley. Thank you. And I walk down the stairs and back into the room where George and Tobias are. Uh, as Anastasia enters the room, um, there there is the frame of a mirror. There don't appear to be shards anywhere. They appear to have all been swept up extremely quickly. <laughs> Boys, did you really shatter a mirror? Well, I don't see, um... I don't see how you could, uh, say that that had happened. Well, because you're holding the frame of the mirror. And there's no oh. mirror in it. Yeah, well, well it's that... a de decorative piece. <laughs> uh, 
Well, I mean, it was supposed to go up in the office. It was. Even as I said it, be careful, slow down, the thing bloody shatters. How many times do we have to go through this, George? (sighs) I know, I know, I know, I know. Uh, I, yeah, I I got a little bit excited with the fact that the gym is almost uh, set up and, uh, yeah, uh, moving really fast, door frames, not, not the best plan, I have to admit, my bad. Well, I suppose we can get a replacement. It's not the end of the world. Not yet. No, not yet. Not until the uh, Second Inquisition start poking around here. You have given us seven years of bad luck, so it's obviously going to happen now. Please don't put this on me. It's all on you, George. All on you. Congratulations, you know, you've single-handedly brought around the second coming. Well, mm-hmm. I mean, if that happens, I'll have to just punch them all until they go away, yeah? Let's yeah. just not joke about Gehenna. It's not a thing we should joke about. A lot of with thin bloods on walking the streets. After the Coterie have, have left Zelda a few moments, she then takes a chalice out of her bag, and a small blood bag, and re- proceeds to fill the chalice with blood before walking downstairs into the room where the rest of the coterie are. How is everything going down here? George smashed a mirror. It's going smashing. Oh dear. Zelda just looks at the wreckage of the mirror while taking a quick sip from the chalice of blood. But, oh, uh... I see that, you got mm, it's, it's what's left from, uh, from donated supplies from London. I only have one more of these left. Well then, it's a good job that uh, myself and Toby have already finished with the uh, gym. Excellent. Um, only, so, one, only one smashage. So, so, so just to ask, the mirror you've smashed, is it one of the expensive ones that I wanted you to keep, or was it just one of the cheap ones? I don't know. Um, what does this one look like? And uh, I'll just hold up the frame. <laughs> oh, that 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 was that was a mid nineteenth century mirror. That Pre-war. sounds like it's going out your wages, boy. Well, most yeah. Can I just say I'm, I am quite upset that our dear employer buys cheap mirrors? Oh, exactly. No. Well, I bought them cheap mirrors to put in the gym. They, 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 they're for the custom, their customers to use. Yeah. yeah. I dare say if they're all that busy staring at themselves doing bicep curls, they're probably not really going to uh, properly appreciate a decent mirror, are they? Not no, they're really. probably not. They're just appreciating themselves. So that's generally how it works. Is that why you stare in the mirror, George? That's not why I stare in the mirror. He stares stare in the mirror because he's trying to win the staring competition. Yeah, and I'm pretty good at it, to be fair. Although the last three times it's been a draw. You do know, George, we don't blink unless we want to blink, don't you? Shh! It kept him quiet for sixteen hours. Wait, we don't have to blink. Oh no, my we... goodness, I think I just lost half my brain cells. Stop, stop. I blink confusedly anyway. <laughs> I got George broken out of prison for his physical abilities. When you, say, did... when you say, you keep saying that, you keep saying, I got him broken out of prison, did he just punch through the wall? Well, well I couldn't even human when he went in. Let us be honest, though, if he was still in prison at dawn, there would have been a lot of questions why there was a pile of ash in the room, not a prisoner. They they, they do have walls, you know. I wouldn't know. I've never been in one. The, the official police records state that it was a JCB that broke him out. Yep. Official police records say that I'm a JCB, apparently. Do you know what? I'm, I'm just going to forget that that sentence just came out of your mouth, George. That's fine. George will in about ten minutes. Let's be fair. That's not the that's not the first time I've been down on uh, official police records as being a heavy goods vehicle. Why am I not surprised? 
To be fair, he is that big that they do have to weigh him on the car scales. Yep. To be fair, I, d I do have to get myself reclassified, but um, unfortunately, I can't find anyone that will polish up the chassis. I'm That's what? because no one's got a big enough category on their driving license. <laughs> That's it, and I don't think anyone would uh, want, want to drive something with uh, the level of handling. Are we making references to what you have in your trousers? So, uh, shall we move on? <laughs> yes, let's. Um, George Tobias, did uh, did you happen to spot where you dumped the sofa that does belong in Zelda's office? Oh, that'll be um, probably down in the the entrance room. Hold on, hold on. Is it? No, it's no, no. I'll 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 get it, George. I'll get it. Fine, fine. Yes. Can I, can I, do not rip the leather sofa. That was I, I head yeah. off towards the lobby to uh, to grab the sofa. Oh, Timothy is so useful, is he not? Tobias. His name's Tobias. Tobias. I, Tobias I I, Duke. You know I do know what his name is, don't you? I know you do. But the yeah. more you pretend that you don't and call him other names, the more I start getting a little bit annoyed. And I would never wish to annoy you, Sherry, but you'll know what he is and what he stands for, don't you? I'm quite aware. However, he is part of our little happy family. And whilst I understand oh, yes. that tormenting him is a little bit on the fun side, it we... can get a bit tedious after a while. Yeah. My apologies. I also, explain... off... I start to forget what his actual name is, and then when that happens, I'll call him the wrong name. Then I'll feel bad, and that'll be on you. We would never want that, George. Good. Good. Now then, I've uh, written a small itinerary, and I've looked through what stock we have. We should still have all the tools and equipment for the uh, garage, so that we can do the usual to the cars we get in. Uh, we are running low on the pharmaceutical goods. Not a lot of your supplies left, George, or mine. Nope. Not round here. As for the Duke's supplies, they are non-existent at the moment. There is... But... The, the, we need to get more food for the Duke. You all have arms, my dear employer. I could just take a sip if it come to it. We could, yeah. But then, thing is, if we start pay giving you free payment up front and you haven't even done anything for us yet, what's the point? Don't you trust my honour? Well, I don't know. I mean, I've been around a lot of uh, your type before, and they tend to just surrender when things get hairy. So uh, I'm going to go with nah. I am wounded. Well, let, let's table this disagreement. Um, so let's see. We need to find new suppliers. I will speak to the prince to see if he knows any. The Duke, if you could, next time you go out using your powers... Have a spy around, listen in to see if you can find any suppliers of the pharmaceuticals we're looking for. I shall speak to my clan. They will know pretty much everything, is what we do. Mm -hmm. And we will need somebody to scope out the local vehicle merchandise. Yep. Other thing we need to do is put posters up for this gym. I don't know how you do it these days. Is it is it the Facebook? Is that social how you do media it? Is, social media is one used thing, but we're going to have to check with the prince to see if that's something that's frowned upon. I mean, there's old school ways, there's shops, there's uh, there's telephone poles. Yeah. I mean, I could nail a poster to every telephone pole in a 10 mile radius within the next 10 minutes. Let, let's let's get the place looking nice first, shall we? We don't want uh, customers coming in and seeing That's a fine, bland, yeah. unfinished, unpacked building. Yeah, yeah. Got it. So, uh, which room do you want doing next, then, boss lady? 
Well, if you're finished with your gym, yep. it would be advantageous for you to check all the tools and start setting up the garage. Garage. Got it. Make, make sure it's uh, in the room with the big opening shutter door thing. Yep. Yep, that's the one that would get the, the garage would go in. Yep, yep, got it. Might I also suggest that once you're finished setting up the garage, that perhaps you look at setting up somewhere where we can all sleep. Because, well, we are going to want to have to sleep at some point. What, floor not good enough for you, princess? No, of course not. Why would I sleep on the floor? I'm, I, I am happy with my couch for now. But yes, there should be in the boxes somewhere uh, ready to assemble bunk beds. Yep. Bunk I'll beds. Say, bunk I'll beds. Say what? Zelda, darling, we didn't pack bunk beds. Oh dear. What did we pack? I'm sure they were on the list. Well, if we did pack bunk beds, then they're not in boxes. Or at least not in those boxes. Hmm. So unless George and Tobias brought in some stuff and they've left it towards the back of the building, then we don't have any beds. And this could be an issue. Because I am not sleeping on the floor like some common filth. Is there an Ikea nearby? At this time of night? No, of course not. Hmm. Oh, it would be great if they were 24 hours, but... Pretty sure they shut at about 8pm, and uh, it is definitely not 8pm anymore. Yes. What, what would you suggest, then? <sighs> well, I suppose, if you're taking the sofa, I suppose I might just have to sleep on top of the boys. They can what? sleep on the floor. At which point, I come back and go, what? Who's sleeping on what? You sleeping... She said she's sleeping on us. I mean, she could at very least buy us a drink first. Exactly. I don't think she means like that, you... No, never mind. Well, that's what it sounded like, Duke. Did sound very forward. She is an angel of music and culture and sophistication. And, and I know exactly what those singers are like. Yeah. <laughs> Make a lot of real good noises, they do. Boys, ah, now I'm out. I'm out. Don't be saying things about me you know are not true. Are you oh, saying so you don't, don't make, make nice noises? noises? Oh, I make beautiful noises. Not the kinds that you're insinuating, of course. What's an insinuating? She means she means we're saying things and meaning something else. Oh no no no! I was just saying some stuff. And that's anyway, all you do. You say some stuff, got... George. And we laugh about it. We've got to get it. the garage sorted, haven't we? Yes. And somewhere for everybody to sleep. So we have to put those bunk beds up then. There aren't any bunk beds. I mean, could you sleep in the cars? Mm. They, have, they have windows. They do have, have windows, garage. but we have a garage. That is a good point, actually. I suppose we could bring the BMW in through the garage, and I could sleep in the BMW. I could at least recline the chairs backwards. Yes, that actually yep. might be a good idea. Good job, you two. You had an actual intelligent idea. I'm sure that would be a lot nicer if it was a lot less patronising. Yeah, it, it really, really would. No, I'm, well, I'm being quite serious. You had a good idea, and I'm proud of you for it. I can't okay. wait for... I cannot wait for the next century when you have another one. I'd pull out a small sticker sheet and give George a gold star on his shirt. <laughs> oh, magnifique. Oh, I well. didn't realise you were still carrying those, Tobias. That was... Well, actually, when did I give you those? It was quite a while ago. Uh, 19... thingy? No, yeah. 19 thingy. Yes, 19 thingy. Uh, a while ago, basically. Pretty much. Only one in just... hundred. I'm, I'm just saying, it doesn't really get much good ideas very quickly, so they might last a while. Yeah. Do you want you want the BMW? You want the Beamer in here? Yeah. You want the um? Should we should we get the truck in here as well? Um. No. Leave the leave the truck out there. That 
that's not suspicious in any way. The BMW, however, that does need to come inside. Uh, Duke, would you would you mind driving the BMW into the garage, please? It would be my honour and privilege to assist you in any way I can. Mm, thank you, dear. And the Duke smiles, bows, and walks out. Uh, okay. I, uh, Sleeping arrangements sorted. I pop off and uh, lift open the shutters. Don't even bother with the remote. Oh, George, you're going no, to that's, break that's the... Down... Oh, no. That sounds expensive. Yeah. It really is. Yep, yeah, that's that's how that's how the mechanics break. And now we're gonna have to get that fixed. <laughs> if I can dig out the tools I can find it, I can probably fix it. Good, good, because it's like a few thousand pounds to get the people out to come repair that. I am in the wrong job. It's fine, it goes up, it comes back down again. It's meant to do it automatically, George. <laughs> Well, I guess I'll have to stand here then. Probably actually quite a safer option. Okay, just let's just get the Duke to get the car inside. Once the car is inside, George, you'll have to pull it back down again. Right, and right. And then Got not do it again. Okay. I mean, I didn't hear a clunk, so I don't think there's any permanent damage. Well, I suppose we'll find out when we find the remote and try and open it with the remote the next time. Yep. I mean, the book. Anyway, you're coming in, there. Duke. What? Uh, the Duke's getting the car warmed up, I believe. I mean, he doesn't need to warm the car up. He literally just needs to get into it, reverse, and get out the car. Should be pretty good at reversing. I am not going to follow that rabbit hole. No. Best that we don't. Mm. Yeah. <sighs> okay, so once we get this sorted, get the rest of the garage sorted, get the rest of your office sorted, Zelda, dear, and, um, well, uh, that might actually be it for tonight, because there's not much else we can do until we get more resources organised. Yes. How long does it take a, to drive a car backwards, really? I don't know, but um, if everything is sorted down here and everybody's got the itinerary for tonight, I will uh, go back to uh, sorting out the paperwork, as it were. And with that, Zelda will go back to the office. Oh, no, oh, there he, there he's, yep, yeah, he's here. He's reversing that car quite nicely, actually. Oh, yeah. I do look forward to a lie back down. Back it up, back it up, a little bit more, little bit more, little bit more. Uh, that that's enough. That's enough, mate. With a deep sigh, I take the keys out of the car, mutter some obscenities in French about my coterie friends, and get out of the, get out of the car, smile, and walk over. Did you miss me, my friends? Oh, um, immensely. Mighty. Yeah, but when you came back in, it was easier to hit you. <laughs> so it's easy to miss you because it's hard to get a target on you, mate. <laughs> I am quite slippery when I need to be. Yep. Speaking of rabbit holes we're not going to follow, that's another one. Yep. Boys, if you don't mind, I am actually going to take a small lie down, perhaps practice some singing in the comfort of the car, of course. And, well, you right. can continue setting up, I guess. I'm yeah, going to go um... sort the garage out before George breaks my tools. If you do oh, not mind. break your tools. May I listen to your performance, Shelley? You know I am such an avid fan of your voice. Of course. By all means, come join me. Mercy. As the night draws on, the coterie continue about with their little tasks. Zelda setting up her businesses, George and Tobias organising the garage, and the Duke and Anastasia in the car while she practices her singing. The nights are long, and there are many, many obstacles ahead of this coterie of Camarilla kindred. Who knows what troubles they'll find themselves in. But that is a tale for another night. 
Vampire the Masquerade, Birmingham by Night, featuring Dan as Big George, Gav as Tobias, Phil as the Duke, Amy as Zelda, and Jade as Anastasia. Music by Bruno Freitas, with artwork by Chubby Star. Vampire the Masquerade is owned by White Wolf Publishing. Please support the official release.